GM's Clash Chess Opening Preparation. Hello everyone and welcome back. So today you will learn why it's so important to prepare against your opponents and how can you catch your opponent in the opening. So today we will see a match between Daniel Darda, Grandmaster from Belgium against Kirill Alexenko, one of the best players in the world, number 51 uh, for now and also he played in the candidates tournament he born in Russia and now he represents Austria. So before I will start, I really want to start it with you. Come on, let's see it. So we are coming back to the game and let's see this fantastic and very, very exciting match between these two grandmasters. So Daniel is playing the move d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, and now knight to c3. It was played, I think, this game was played maybe two or three months ago. Um, yeah, it was played, I think, in Spain, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, it was like Menorca Open 2024, um, three months ago, right, great. So after knight c3, of course, there are several moves, bishop b4, for example, um, c6, maybe the Slav, um, I don't know, knight b7, also an option, but Kirill is playing the move d takes c4, and it should be fine for, uh, for, for black, you know, it's to equalize the position. Uh, for example, e4, there are several options, also bishop b4, b5, a lot of theory here and uh, yeah, it's it's something that you, you should know if you want to play uh, for both sides. But Daniel Darder is playing the move e3 and Kirill is playing the move a6, the point that after bishop takes c4, uh, Black's plan is to play b5, bishop b3 and bishop b7 with uh, the next move will be c5, knight bd7, rook c8, bishop e7, castle, and black is totally fine in this position, really, really equal position. Uh, but after a6, Daniel Darda is not giving up uh, for b5, and he's playing the move a4. And now black is playing b6, bishop takes c4, bishop b7, and now castle, and now c5 was played, of course, after d takes c5, for example, just queen takes d1, I think, rook takes, and bishop c5, and black is totally fine, Re really equal position, probably will be a draw. Um, but white played the move queen to e2, of course, until now, they are playing very fast, with confidence, both of them. Now, black is playing the move queen to c7, also makes sense, because he is understanding that rook d1 will be the next move, obviously, and rook d1, uh, of course, was played, knight bd7, black wants to develop with bishop e7, castle, and connect the rooks, rook fd8, rook ac8, and to say, okay, everything is fine, I don't have trouble, of course, he must think about this a6 pawn, so rook ac8 will not be uh, immediately, but this was um, his plan. And now white played a fantastic move, of course, one of the preparation here of Daniel Darda, I'm sure 100%, without talking with him, but yeah, it's it looks like it's a preparation, and he played the move d5. This is really, really strong move, and let's see what he's got. So e takes d5 was played, knight takes d5, and now, you know, Kirill Alexenko playing, you know, very, very fast, with, with full confidence, knight takes d5. But unfortunately, after knight d5, there is this just amazing move for white. But before that, I really want to show you. I'm sure that 100% Kirill Alexenko thought that bishop takes d5 will be played immediately. Bishop takes, rook takes, I don't know, bishop e7, probably e4, castle, I don't know, bishop to b2, right? Uh, b3, bishop b2, something around knight f6, rook d1, rook d8, or queen b7. And it should be should be very very equal position. I don't know knight d2, or rook fd8, or queen c6, rook f8. It seems like fine uh, for both of the colors, of course. But surprisingly, in this particular position, also rook d takes d5 may be interesting. But I'm not sure because bishop d6 or bishop e7 seems like black is fine because castle the next move. 
But here, they're just amazing move by white e4. And, you know, I really didn't talk uh, with Daniel Darda, but I'm sure 100% that this position was in his preparation uh, during his morning. Um, and, you know, e4 just sacrificing a knight and playing e4. Of course, e takes d5. This is the threat. And now black has just no moves to play because for example knight f4 is really really bad because bishop takes f7 king takes f7 bishop takes f4 of course after queen takes f4 just rook d7 and take the bishop on b7 and of course with this king is just game over and after bishop f4 for example queen c8 don't forget also queen c4 but also just rook takes d7 queen takes an i d5 winning the queen and the game so Particular position is just amazing. After king d8, I think just queen d2 makes for me a lot of sense. Also queen e3 maybe. Yeah, queen e3. Uh, because this knight is under attack. e5, e6. This king is just uh, game over for him. Also knight g5 maybe with some threats here. Knight f7, knight e6 when the bishop is not here. So yeah, it's it just losing the game. Um, so yeah, black is playing the move knight 5 to f6. And don't forget, white is still on his prep, e5. And, you know, I, I, I saw that Kirill Alexenko must, you know, must thought to, to himself, what Daniel Darda prepare against me in this particular position? Because I'm sure that he didn't thought about it. He's, he's thinking like, oh, you know what? Bishop takes d5 and we will go for this position and I will do a draw, easy draw. But no, Daniel Darda... You know, um, prep, you know, probably with Stockfish or Lila or, you know, like in the cloud, something around that and doing a very, very strong job uh, in the preparation. It's very important to understand the preparation just can win your game. And this will happen in this game. Uh, so e4, black played the move knight 5 to f6, e5, of course bishop f3 is not good because queen takes and also the rook is under attack here. So he's playing the move bishop to e7 and now bishop to f4, another very strong move. You don't want to take the, the knight on f6 because here, I don't know, knight takes f6 and I'm not sure at all that um, black has um, problems. Of course rook e1 maybe, bishop f3, queen takes castle. Also, this one, I'm not sure it's so good for black, but of course, everything is fine and black is not uh, losing here, uh, at least, right? So, after bishop e7, uh, sorry, bishop e7, yeah, bishop f4, very, very strong move with e, f e takes f6, this is the threat, and now black play the move knight to d5, rook takes d5, I think also bishop takes d5 was, was very, very strong here, bishop takes e6, and yeah, it's, it seems like this position just just very, very bad. I don't know, queen e5 with this one and rook takes d5. Seems like just losing position immediately. Uh, but yeah, rook takes d5 also. Very, very uh, interesting move. Uh, and you know, creatively one. So we played the move castle and now e6 was played. I think also bishop g3. If I remember correctly, this was the, the best move in the position for Daniel, but he played the move e6, probably in this position already, he didn't uh, remember or know something from um, from the preparation, because in this position you he knew 100% that the position is winning. So he played the move e6, queen takes f4, rook takes d7, bishop takes f3, now e takes f7, check, king h8, queen takes f3, of course after queen takes c4, just rook takes e7, and uh, white is up a pawn and this pawn is just brilliant for him. So he played the move queen takes f3, g takes f3, bishop f6, rook e1, b5, takes, 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 uh, bishop b2, and now bishop to c6, and now uh, he played the move rook to a1, and you know what, stop the video now and think by yourself how can you uh, find the brilliant tactic here that finishing the game uh, absolutely amazing by Daniel Darda. Of course, rook takes a1, bishop takes a1, and rook to d8. Now, Kirill Alexenko resigned his game, but of course, after rook takes d8, bishop e8, and the next move will be a promotion of a queen, and white will win the game. So, ladies and gentlemen, I really, really hope you enjoy and learn something from this video. We must understand the preparation for the game is very necessarily. You can just 
uh, search your opponent games in the mega database, in Google, in Chesscom, in Leeches maybe, and you can learn how he's playing, right? What is his openings? How can you catch him in the opening? And I must show, I must tell you guys that, in my opinion, it's something that I also need to improve in my uh, preparation. Uh, I feel like I lost a lot of games in my life uh, while my opponent prepared against me very, very strong, um, you know, very deep into my preparation and into my theory knowledge. So yeah, I also need to improve about it. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to click the like button and also subscribe my channel. See you soon. Bye-bye.